everyone. Uh, welcome to our book lunch with uh, Robin Bennett, author of Monster Max, uh, Monster Max and the Bob Hat Gang, and Monster Max and the Marmalade Ghost, which is out today. Um, uh, so as this is a, a pre-recorded launch, we'll both actually be hidden behind the scenes as you watch this. So please do pop any questions for Robin in the chat box and we will uh, respond to you there. Uh, so just to start off, Robin, could you just tell us a little bit about the Monster Max series in general? Yes, um, I, I wanted to write a story with a really simple hook. Uh, um, I've, I've sort of done lots of books before where I suddenly found I'm having to explain it to children or to, to people in bookshops. Um, and 10 minutes later, I'm still standing there waving my arms about. So I thought, if I could just do something with a really, really simple hook, and I came up with this idea that what if, when you burped, you turned into a monster, and then, you know, you have to have a trigger for sort of going back again. And then so if you sneeze then and you turn back into sort of whoever you are. And that was the original idea. And, and Max, Max was sort of the perfect vehicle for that because he's not hugely cool, but he's not uncool. And um, he's, he's about as normal as you can get in the sense that he does all the normal things that children do at that age, except for one huge difference as I say when he burps he turns into a monster and things start to happen and then he sneezes and it's never at the right time. <laughs> Brilliant um, so see, this is the the second book in the uh, in the Monster Max series yes, so yeah. what what kind of led you from the first one to the second one? Well the the first one was sort of setting the scene and and it was very much again about the things that I thought were really important from the off which were uh, friendship is super important uh, when you're that age and also when you're reading. I think children love to read about friends and how to deal with friends. And so the first book was sort of setting that up um, and family as well. And there's a sort of a strong element of being a monster comes with responsibility. And one of the big things is to protect and do good stuff. Yeah. And that was the first book setting that up. Um, and then once you got in the second book then, um, it's Max and his friends, and that's Peregrine, um, who's the inventor, and there's also Frankenstein, his cat, um, who is disreputable, and probably one of those cats that nobody but their owner actually loves. Um, but, and it's strange, but their owners love them beyond and above anything else, but everyone else is sort of mystified as to why. But it, so... They're, they're now, they're, they're in control of their, they've got their powers sorted, they can turn, they can invent things, they can turn into monsters, um, and, uh, and they're, they're, they're out there, they're doing good stuff, and they're protecting, but nothing's happening. Um, and this used to happen a lot when I was a kid, um, and I don't know whether this is the same with you, you get a plan together at nine o'clock in the morning after breakfast and go, right, today we're going to go out and we're going to do this. Um, and it's going to be great. And you'd run upstairs, you get dressed up and, and you pile into the garden. And then whatever scenario you'd got in your head sort of planned out just it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, and that's when you have to improvise. And that's when the interesting stuff starts to happen. So, as you say, in book two, Monster Max um, and the Marmalade Ghost, um, it finds Max and Peregrine and Frankenstein at a bit of a loose end, really. Um, and they're having to improvise. Um, but it's in, you know, within sort of the improvisation, that's where all the inventive stuff starts to happen. And it really does start to happen. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, I think one of the things I like most about uh, Once Back to the Marmalade Ghost is there's a lot of older characters in there. How did you find writing them? Are they different to write to, to other characters? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, I, I have to say, I borrowed shamelessly from experience. Um, my, my grandfather, um, actually, and he didn't really need to, moved into a home um, uh, in Salisbury. And um, this was obviously a few years ago. Um, he lived to a ripe old age of nearly 101. Um, but he absolutely loved living in a home. I think it, you know, sort of partly to do maybe with his army background, but he liked sort of the communal living. And, and I must admit, I sort of borrowed heavily from my experiences going down to Salisbury every week to see him. Um, and it was it was different. And obviously, you have to be careful that you're not patronising or you don't write, you know, sort of stock characters, old people, you know, yeah. silly old people characters. Yeah. That sort of thing. Um, but that's not difficult. Um, and uh, and and as as soon as as soon as things start happening, your characters just react 
on their own, I find. And that's what stories are all about. They're, they're not really about, um, they're more about once you've got your character sorted out, you just let them let them loose and, and, and they react how your imagination tells you they would react. Uh, that's half the fun. And um, obviously, again, this is the second book in the series. Did you yeah. find it harder to write than the first one because it was the second one, because there was already kind of an established uh, series to start from? Um, no, so in a sense, yes, because there's the waste of expectation, you know, sort of, is it going to be the same? Is it as good? And there's that awful thing, sort of, well, I think it's the same. I think it's the same type of book and I think it's the same type of funny. But it wasn't until a few people had read it. Um, and and that's Janet, my editor, and other people, sort of friends and, and family. And then sort of said, yes, it's, you know, it's 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 still funny and it's still the same character, still the same book, but I sort of breathe a sigh of relief. I'm quite happy in that world. I like that world because it's, again, it's a very usual world that most of us know. He lives in a in a very sort of ordinary suburb that you find the length and breadth of the country yeah. um, uh, in, in a very normal house with very normal parents who are very present. Um, and, uh, and so that sort of trips off the tongue sort of quite nicely when you're writing, so to speak. Um, it's, uh, I think the hardest thing um, is, is suppressing ideas um, because when you're writing and your characters are moving and speaking, they do unexpected things and and you have to be quite strict with yourself not to go off at a tangent, or at least oh. I have to be. Um, uh, How'd you find that? <laughs> really difficult. <laughs> <laughs> about as hard as, it's about as hard as staying quiet in class. <laughs> yeah. um, <clears throat> so no, I, yeah, I find it hard. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about uh, how Crit came about? Yeah, Crit, Crit was borrowed from a, a short story I wrote uh, in, I went to a wedding in Romania um, and a friend of mine was marrying um, a Transylvanian dentist, which I thought was hysterical. <laughs> I still do. Um, and um, and the and yeah, so I went to a wedding in Romania and um, and I was a bit of a loose end for the first week or so. So my wife and I, we were sort of going around Transylvania and sort of um, looking at things. Um, and I wrote a story about um, and we were in the mountains. We were in the um, the, the sort of the, um, uh, the, the sort of range of mountains they've got there um, in uh, sort of the Carpathian Mountains, and uh, and it was very cloudy. And I wrote a story about a, a a a very very tall, pointy mountain that you can't see what's happening at the top because it's always surrounded by cloud. And I quite like that idea, so I borrowed it from that. Um, and I've always thought that. That all that kind of sort of shape changing thing that you get um, in in sort of um, vampire and werewolf stories, I always thought it was a shame that it never really hit sort of British folklore. That yeah. they're, all, they're over there, and we're kind of with our elves and fairies over here, um, and never the twenty, never the two should meet. So I thought it would be really a good idea to sort of mash it up a bit. So I came up with Crit, and I liked the idea that. Max originally, or Max's mum, comes from Crit. And, and again, so everything else is normal in Crit, except for anyone who comes from Crit can change into something, um, you know, like a wolf or a rock giant or a sprite or whatever, um, or a great big dustbin eating hairy monster. Um, and uh, and so, so, yes, that sort of married up nicely with the sort of, um, I suppose that sort of Paddington feel where everything's normal except for one big thing. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I've got a bit of a, a quick fire. Would you rather round to go for next? So I'm going to ask you, would you rather this or that? Okay. And you have to tell me the first thing that pops to your head. Into my would I rather. Position. Would you rather eat orange marmalade or raspberry jam? Raspberry jam. Oh. I know. I know. I had to be honest there, though. I had to be honest. Uh, would you rather do a headstand for 10 minutes or a cartwheel for 10 miles? Headstand for 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, would you rather be a boy who turned into a monster when he burps or a friend of me with a poop machine that can catch them? <laughs> the first one, definitely. Yeah. Uh, would you rather live in England or Crit? Crit. Yeah. And then, lastly, would you rather burp rainbows or fart glitter? I think burping rainbows would be far more socially acceptable. Yeah, I think a bit less painful as well. 
<laughs> Brilliant. That's all my questions for you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Robin, for joining us this evening. Um, nice uh, so I'll put the links in the description below if you'd like to buy either Monster Max and the Marble Hat of getting all the brand new Monster Max and the Marmalade Ghost from our website. Of course, you can also uh, purchase them from your local bookshop or borrow them from your local library as well. So again. And also, one thing I'd just like to add, yep. have a look out online for me making Monster Max orange, um, uh, uh, what's this stuff called, gloop? What do they call it? Slime. Um, slime. <laughs> yes, slime. And uh, I even got my, um, where is it now? Um, I bought a Monster Max apron. Brilliant. And a Monster Max uh, chef's hat. And there's me online making Monster Max marmalade, haunted yeah. marmalade. So you can watch out for those as well. Yeah, that'll be on our YouTube channel as well. <laughs> Jolly good. Lovely. Thank you very much, Robin. Thank you for having me.